go to school. I don't care if you've got a combination of the Black Death and the bubonic plague, you're going and that's final. I shall report this to Amnesty International. Oh, look, there's that nice friend of yours waiting for you. Go on. The hospital for a checkup, sir. Very well, sit down. Oh, and what is your excuse, boys? What weird and wonderful flights of imagination have you dreamt up to explain your recent absences or even today's lateness? You may think it unlikely, sir, but an alien spacecraft landed in our garden just as I was leaving for school. They asked me for alien directions, left and right. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you come in here with such an obvious pack of lies? Do you think I'm some kind of idiot? Well... <laughs> Stay behind and sing me a break time. Thank you, sir. Certainly, sir. As you're so pleased about it, you will stay in every break time today, including lunch break. And I will stay with you to make sure that you do some work. Thank you, sir. <laughs> How'd you get on at school today? They said I looked ill. They said I should have stayed at home the day. Well, Mrs. Walpole was asking after you today. Why? Does she think I look ill? She needs your help. What her? She and Mr. Walpole are going away on holiday next week. She wants you to look after their pets while they're away. Never. I'd rather drown in cold porridge. I said you'd love to. But I hate their pets. Their cats spit at me. And even their goldfish glares at me. She said she'd pay you. Oh. When do I start? She wants you to go round there so she can show you where everything is. But I know where everything is. Go round anyway. Now, I don't want you getting up to any of your tricks. Tricks? What tricks? Mrs. Warper is a very influential person. I'm standing for the chair of our third world group and I need her support, so I don't want you upsetting her. <laughs> I thought you sat on a chair, not stood for it. <laughs> that is. Get it, will you? Maybe that slog boy for you again. I said, Brian. Oh, it's you. Mm. What's happened to your key? In my sports jacket pocket, I think. Oh. Where's Brian? Oh, that's the baffling thing. Why? One minute he's here, the next he's vanished. Like something out of Star Trek, as if he's been beamed up. Huh. Actually, I had a phone call at work today about him. Oh? Yeah, from his headmaster. Apparently he's been behaving oddly at school. He always behaves oddly. He is odd. Oh, he's been behaving more oddly than usual. He's following the teachers about. Well, what's odd about that? He's following them everywhere. He even followed Bunning to the staff toilet. Anyway, his headmaster wants to see us. And his teacher, Mr. Wiggis, tomorrow morning at 11.30.
I'm in trouble. My parents are coming to see the headmaster and Wiggis today. What about? It doesn't matter what it's about. The headmaster's okay. We'll just say I'm unhappy. But when Wiggis gets going, he'll tell them everything I've been up to. Can't you stop them coming? They didn't believe me when I said an epidemic of typhoid had just broken out. No, my only chance is to stop Wiggis coming to that meeting at 11.30, and I need your help. Mine? I can't do it on my own. I'm already working myself to the bone, keeping away from that slug. What do you want me to do? Get a cassette machine from the English cupboard. And meet me by the boiler room. I've got a plan. Oh, oh. Go up. Go down. You know what to do? Of course, I'm not stupid, you know. Help! Please, help! <laughs> help! Help! Help me, please! Help! Help! Yes, what is it, Vanetta? I was passing the boiler room just now and I heard something funny. Oh? Yeah. It sounded like someone calling for help. What? Right. I'm coming. Hello, Louis. Ah! Oh. All right. What are you up to? What? Me? I am sorry about this. I can't. I think where Mr. Wiggis has got to. He's usually very punctual. Very punctual indeed. Perhaps he's being tied up. Oh, I do hope not. I know our children can be a little high-spirited, so we keep the string locked up just in case. I meant delayed. Yes, yes. Yes, he, he does appear to be. Help! Help! I assure you, Miss King, I had nothing to do with this. I came in here because someone was calling for help. And you really expect me to believe that? Of course. Look. You've been trying to get me to go out with you ever since you came to this school. First for riding your car, then to the pictures. I thought you might be lonely. Look, Wiggis, let us get one thing clear. You don't interest me. I do not find you attractive in any way. If you were the last man on earth, I wouldn't go out with you. And locking me in the boiler room with you is not going to make me like you any better. But I didn't do this. And if I was going to, I'd hardly do it now. I'm supposed to be in a meeting with the head and the parents of that little swine, Brian Boys. That's it. What's it? Brian Boys. He's behind this. Oh, don't be ridiculous. He is. I can feel it in my bones. You're obsessed with that child. If the world blew up tomorrow, you'd blame him for it. Because he would be behind it. There is nothing that that blot on the universe isn't capable of. I've got a class of 25 children waiting for me in the domestic science room. Help! Let us out! Look, Mr. Blake, I realise that Mr. Weiss's presence here is very important. Oh, yes, it is. But I do have other appointments today. Yes, and I told work I'd be in later. Oh, it's most unusual. I can't think what's keeping him. Oh, that'll be him now. Come in! Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't find Mr. Wiggis anywhere. Oh, I see you are. Thank you. Oh, dear. Surely we could see Mr. Wiggis later. I was just about to suggest that myself. Oh, yes, I suppose so. What actually do you want to see us about? Oh, to be frank, Mrs. Boyce, and I like to be frank. Yes, I'm sure you do. I find that frankness is the best policy. Well, what are you being frank about in this case? Being frank, it's Brian's recent odd behaviour. Oh? Yes. You see, as I said to you on the telephone, the thing that concerns us most is this following people around. I wonder whether this has anything to do with his recent loss of memory. Did he have a bang on the head? Almost. Pardon? Nothing. N no, the loss of memory came as a complete surprise. But he was ill afterwards. Dr. O'Rourke said there was nothing wrong with him. Well, perhaps it's all in the mind. If the school psychologist had another look at him... I'm afraid after her last experience of Brian, Dr. Robbins has been ill herself. The sight of Brian now brings her out in a dreadful rash. I know the feeling. It occurred to me that this following people around is perhaps a, an expression of loneliness. Loneliness? Yes. Yeah. It's possible. 
Do you have any suggestions as to how we could help? Yes, I have. Now, I think it might be a good idea, provided that you both agree that you actually talk to him. Oh. When I find out who did this, I'll kill them. I've already told you. Brian Boys, I know it. Will you shut up about Brian Boys? Help! We're locked in! Miss King. What? Did you really mean what you said earlier? When? You know, about if I was the last man on Earth, he wouldn't go out with me. If you were the last man in the entire solar system, I wouldn't go out with you. Oh. Does that include the surrounding galaxies, too? Help! Help! Talk to him about what? Ah, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I feel it's been really useful, you know. Yes, I can explain. Brian, how are you? Are you all right? No, I'm ill. I shouldn't be at school. Everybody says so. What about your, um, friends? They say I shouldn't be at school as well. What your father is trying to say is, how about if we ask some of them back for tea? Why? Well, we thought it might be nice for you. The person we thought we'd ask is that large boy who called. He's obviously interested in your welfare. That's the one, Edward Slot. Oh, no! With your lunchbox. Come in. You can't keep this up forever. Well, at the moment, it's the safest place there is. Anyway, one thing's for certain. We guess won't come looking for me here. <laughs> Not after yesterday. It was funny. <laughs> and I suppose you can't bother the staff around for protection anymore. Not after the heads meeting with your mum and dad. Do you know, they wanted me to invite the slug around for tea. What have been the first thing they've eaten? How did you get out of it? I told them he was in hospital and wasn't quite out of quarantine. He'll still get you. He says that if he doesn't get you school today, he's coming round your house later. Well, I won't be there either. I'm going to the Walpoles. You're not running away from home, eh? The Walpoles? Is it an island like the Bahamas? <laughs> no, the Walpoles are neighbours with lots of cats. They pay me to look after them, so that's where I'll be. Mum is in this afternoon. You can't spend all your time in the boiler house or in the Walpoles. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Hello? Oh, it's you. You feeling better? Better? Good. Is Brian in? No, I'm afraid not. Are you sure? I'm positive. He's over at Mr and Mrs Warple's talking about their cats. Well, that's a coincidence. I want to see them as well. Mr and Mrs Warple? Yeah, Brian said the same man there. Then why are you here? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, if you hurry, you'll catch him at the Warpool, 43 Roper Street. Right, thank you. Hope you don't miss him. Don't worry, I won't. important to make sure they know you love them. Right. I don't have to kiss them, do I? Give them, give them a smile when you give them their food. Yeah, and a smile, right. Yeah. Each one a different smile. Yes. Mm. And make sure they have the same amount of food each, otherwise they get jealous. Jealous, yes. Right. Where are they at the moment? Oh, they're waiting until you've gone. Yes, they, they, they become very sensitive lately. They're shy. Shy, oh, yes. yes. 
In fact, you may not see them all the time we're away. Right. You see them, do you? They do exist. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, very funny. Yeah. <laughs> they, they become, they become very shy with strangers. Strangers, yes. Ah, are you all right? Yes. It's just this cold I've had. Cold? Oh, dear. Hope you won't give it to our little ones. Uh, what little ones? Oh, the cats. No, no, it's all gone now. Anyway, um... <clears throat> Mr. Warple and I have a lot to do to prepare for our holiday, and we're sure you have to get back home. Oh, uh, not yet. Oh. There are still a few things I'm not sure about. Oh? I think it's best if I know about your cats, right from their kittenhood. Oh. Very uh, well. <laughs> well, let me see now. Um, well, Poo Poo was a stray. Yes. Yes. We found her in the garden shed. Do you remember about five, five years, years ago? ago? Was it? Yes. Oh, five years at least. Five years ago. Of course. Oh. Mangy little thing, well, wasn't she? Leg missing. Oh, she's been really good. Going back to this rubber mouse Tiddles played within 1981. Look, I'm no you're concerned for the welfare of our little ones. We're, obvi we're obviously delighted at the interest you've shown in them. Delighted? Yes, but we do have things to prepare. Mm -hmm. Of course. Don't let me stop you. Well, aren't you going? Oh, uh, I'm just on my way. When? Uh, when what? When, when are you, you going, going to, to go? go? Uh, now, immediately. Actually, yes. would you mind awfully if I left through your downstairs toilet window? I beg your pardon? You see, I have this phobia about front doors, you see. Don't worry. The little ones are in safe hands. You're running into you. How are you? So, I had penguin's disease, did I? You're looking a lot better. Simon Spinks put that note in my lunchbox, did he? So it was him. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? Let me off. I'm going to tear your arms off and make you eat them. But I've just become a vegetarian. <laughs> I'm going to do so much damage to you. There won't be enough left to put in a matchbox. Are we talking about a large matchbox? Wait! Before you hit me, how about a deal? What sort of deal? A TV set. Eh? And a video recorder. I don't get ya. If you don't hit me, I'll give you a TV set and a video recorder. What? If I don't hit ya? And a record player, a stereo cassette player, a microwave oven and a food mixer. All right. But if you're trying to con me... Now would I do that? All right, when? Be at my house, just after midnight. I'll have the front door on the latch, and you'd better bring a barrel. Isn't it amazing? What? The way electricity affects our life. Why, did you electrocute somebody at work today? No, I was just thinking of all the things in this house that run on electricity. The TV, the video, the microwave, the food mixer, the stereo. Don't you think it's amazing? What? How much we depend on it. We have built our lives around electrical appliances. Without them, we'd be lost. Is that it? What? Your thought for the day? Well, you've got to admit it is a thought. I suppose it does fall into that category. What do you think, Brian? About what? Do you know what it would be like without the TV and the video, the microwave and the stereo? No, but I'll do my best to imagine it. Hey. Right, that's a lot. For the moment. But there's nothing more I can give you. Oh, no. We'll see. Don't forget, I've got a lot to pay you back for. Nothing! So we'll just have to see what you come up with, won't we?
Please, please. Hello, please. I think I've just witnessed a burglary. Yes, I saw a very large youth creeping out the back of a house with a wheelbarrow and with lots of stuff in it. But he said and things. No, I'm sure he doesn't live there. Yes, it's Winton Drive. You better move fast if you want to catch him, though. You will? What a relief. Thank you. It's the police again. What? Have you had a burglary? Huh? Burglary? I don't believe this. Do you know how many times we get called to the average household? Once in a lifetime. Three times I've been here in as many weeks. Three! We don't call that often on the Mafia. What's going on? Hello again, young fella. How's your memory? We've been burgled. Burgled? The TV, the video, everything. Well, luckily we had this anonymous tip-off. Someone saw him leaving. It was that friend of yours who called here who did it? Not Bernetta. No, that Edward Slog boy. We caught him red-handed, wheeling the stuff away in a barrow. A barrow! I ask you, it's so simple, it's almost brilliant. Imagine, Slog, a burglar. Yeah, I expect when he kept coming round here pretending to call for Brian, he was casing the joint, eh, Sergeant? Exactly, and he almost got away with it. Mind you, it always interests me, these anonymous tip-offs. Huh? It's usually someone with a grudge, someone who's involved in the job. A sort of underworld revenge. Really? You take my word for it. It's a funny old world, the life of crime. What will happen to this slog boy? He'll go to prison for a very long time. No. Probation, I expect. Probation? But it's dangerous. He ought to be locked up and chained to a wall. Right. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. But he's a lunatic. He might decide to revenge himself on me. I mean us. Most unlikely. You were just chance victims. And the person who's really in danger is the one who informed on him. I certainly wouldn't like to be in their shoes. Well, I'll let you good people try and get back to sleep. Good night. Good night, Sergeant. The person who's really in danger is the one who informed on him. I certainly wouldn't like to be in their shoes. <laughs>